Okay. Um, for what it's worth, I just muted everybody. D did you guys know that if you hold down on the space bar, it will temporarily unmute you. So if you have a question, you can just hold the space bar down and it should turn your audio on until you release the space bar. So that's a little trick that you might want to use or whatever. So here we go. Uh, I'm recording. Uh, these are review questions. Okay, then we'll get into chapter five. So finding the equation of a line. Last night I said you needed a point and you need a slope. The problem is this, this particular problem has points up the yin yang, just as missing the slope. But I also said you could hide it. So the slope is found by using the formula y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. So negative two minus 11, that's y sub two minus y sub one. X sub two is four minus seven. So that's negative 13 over negative three, but we always simplify it to positive 13 over three. The two negatives cancel each other out, negative divided by negative positive, much simpler answer. So that had to be your slope. That will get you some credit on test or quiz or something that you've got the slope. Okay, now we have to decide, okay, which point I'm gonna use, okay? I am gonna uh, uh, use that one simply because it's positive numbers. Okay, that's the only reason. You could also use that one and your argument could be because they're smaller numbers. That's fine. We should, in the end, get the same answer. Okay, but I'm going to use that one. To use it, we start back with this formula again, y equals mx plus b, and we plug in everything we know. Well, we know the y value. That's 11. We know the slope is 13 over 3. We know the x value. That's 7. But we don't know the b value. So we just plugged in everything we knew. Now it comes down to um, how well you know how to do fractions or, or how well you know how to use your calculator, because this is just flat out ugly. Okay. Um, 13 over 3 times 7 over 1, that's, that you might be able to do in your head when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across 13 times 7. I believe is 91 over three. So this is 11 plus nine, no, equals, I'm sorry, 91 over three plus B, okay? This is where you probably have to use your calculator. You're gonna take 91 over three away from both sides. Oops, 91 over three, dummy. Okay, from both sides. When I did it on my calculator, I got negative 58 over three. Can anybody confirm that? That's correct. You can? Okay, good, thank you. Okay, remember last night I was pretty much a space case. I was doing everything wrong. Okay, so now I take everything and I put it back into this formula again, but I write y equals 13 over three for the M times X plus, I just calculated the B value was negative 58 over three. You could change plus negative into 13 over three X minus 58 over three. So instead of saying plus a negative, you could change it to a minus there and you're fine. And that would be the answer for that particular problem. Okay, it got kind of ugly here in the middle with the fractions, but that's why you have your calculator and almost every scientific calculator in the world uh, will do fractions for you. I've got a scientific calculator that's probably 40 years old. Um, I stole it from when I was working at Poway High School years and years and years ago, and it still does fractions 
and I still like it. It's one of the better calculators. Well, you can't find it anymore, but it's still pretty cool. And it does fractions also. So is that okay for the first problem? Yep. On my notes, I think I would star that somehow. You know, or get those little stickies that you can put on the side. Um, my tax CPA guys has all these little thingies on the side, little arrows. He says, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. And oh yeah, pay me, you know, but something, this is a good question. This is a good question. Both of these are good questions. Okay. For future quiz, uh, future exams. All right, let's move on to this. Okay. Same concept. We have the point. I said you need a point and you need a slope to find the equation of a line. Those are the two things I, the, the instructor, have to give you. I have to give you a point. I have to give you a slope. But I can, if I want, hide it. Like this problem, I hid the slope inside of this formula. Well, this problem, I also hid the slope. It talks about perpendicular. So what we have right now is the original slope equals 5 thirds. The original slope, M, equals 5 thirds. Just, just pulling it right from there. That's the slope. Always. The MX, the M is the slope. But for us, because it said the word perpendicular, we use it upside down, T, that's the math symbol for perpendicular. Again, I'm going to use it, you don't have to, but the perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal. Opposite means positive to negative, negative to positive. So this was positive, so I'm going to write negative. Reciprocal means turn it upside down. So that's my slope for this particular problem, okay? So I gave you the point, I gave you the point. You had to work with this equation to find the slope. So I've shown you how I figured out the slope. Now we put everybody back into this formula, okay? And what do we have? The Y value is negative three. The M was negative three fifths. The X was nine plus a B. And now we're back to fraction work again. Okay, I believe if life is good, um, three fifths, what's that? Negative 27 fifths plus B. Okay, again, when you multiply, remember multiplying fractions, you can sneak a little one under there and you multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, you get that. We're gonna add, am I in the glare? Just about. I'm gonna add 27 fifths here, add 27 fifths here, okay? So I get, I'm gonna get, if I did this right, 12 fifths equals B. Again, let my calculator do the work. Negative three plus 27 fifths. On your calculator, you can go negative three plus, and then you hit that fraction button and you can fill in the 27 fifths right there and then press the enter key. And can anybody confirm 12 fifths is an answer? 12 over five? Yes. Okay, cool. So then that tells me my final, final equation is y equals m, which is negative three fifths. Remember, that's the one we're using for this problem. X plus b plus 12 over five. And that would be the equation that goes through that point, wherever that is, and is gonna be perpendicular to that. Perpendicular means they cross at right angles. 
They make a 90 degree angle wherever they cross somehow. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to erase those, go on to a couple other problems. Any questions on either of those examples? Okay. I don't hear anybody yelling at me. Uh, I'm going to erase the entire board. Recall tomorrow night. Uh oh, somebody's yelling no, at me no. now. No, no, just joking. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow night we meet on campus at Mesa, room MS120. Okay. Please be sure to bring a mask, not a face shield. It's got to be one of those stupid masks and some paper and pencil, of course. Okay. You can have water, a water bottle, um, either the pop up lid or your own sports bottle or whatever. Okay. And like I said last night, you're more than welcome to leave the classroom, go outside, stand up, stretch. If you have something to eat outside, not in the classroom, okay? All right, here we go. Couple more problems. Interesting. I told you guys that my uh, when I fell and ruptured my Achilles tendon, my daughter was all upset, so she bought me an Apple Watch. And I told you what I think of it. Doing this, okay, sets off the emergency thing. Have you fallen? Do you want me to call for help? So every once in a while, I have to stop and say, no, I haven't fallen, you idiot watch. I'm doing just fine. Uh, okay, I want you to graph each one of these. Okay, number one, 2x minus 5y uh, is less than or equal to 6. And problem number two, 3x minus 2 is less than 10. So let's pause. Give you a couple of minutes to work those two out. Okay. Um, to graph this, what we, what I said last night was to think that this is actually an equation. For just a second, pretend it's an equation. Y equals two x minus five. Now I want to do this. Not wrong. I'm not going to do it wrong, but, or at least I hope I'm not, but I want to show you wrong thinking. Okay. Several people said, oh, well, look, what if I take away 2x so I get negative 5y equals negative 2x plus 6? That's correct because you can take away 2x from both sides. You can divide both sides by negative 5. So I get y equals negative 2 over negative 5x plus 6 over negative 5. And if we clean that up, we get y equals 2 fifths x, okay, minus 6 fifths. And now the question I ask you that I've done nothing wrong. This is legitimate. You can do this. But question if you're going to start at negative 6 fifths, how do you use rise over run from a fraction? Rise over run is great. If this had been y equals two fifths x, uh, you know, minus three, that's great because you can find three and you go up to over five. But how do you do it accurately or semi accurately when you start at negative six fifths? which is negative one and one fifth and go up to and over five. So I'm encouraging you guys, this is not a wrong way, but in this case, in this instance, it's kind of an awkward way because now you got to use fractions all over the place. So I, I want to go back 
and go back to my tried and true, I want to go back to a table of values. X, okay, plug it in to X minus five Y equals six and get Y. So again, you go back to if X is zero, okay, then I have two times zero minus five Y equals six, divide, I get Y equals uh, negative six fifths, which is Y, okay? Plug zero for Y, I get two X minus five times zero equals six. That's two X equals six. That means X is three, okay? So instead of having a bunch of ugly fractions, I have only one ugly fraction. So by building the table and using the intercepts, remember the intercepts are X equals, plug it in, Y equals, plug it in. So using the intercepts, I can avoid all of the ugly fractions. All right, zero, negative six fifths. Okay, negative six fifths is negative one and one fifth. So negative one and one fifth is right about there, a little bit past negative one, okay? Three zero is right about there. Actually, my scale's a little bit off. Three zero, that's one, two, three, that should be better. Okay. All right, now, Go back, do I draw the line as a solid line or as a dashed line? Solid line. line. Solid line because of that. That tells me my line is solid. Okay, so I'm happy. Boom. Okay, solid line. And now I have to determine where to shade. This symbol here, says you better shade somewhere in your answer, shade above or below that line. Okay. Um, if we turn our brains off and don't think, you would say, oh, less than means below and you'd get it 100% wrong. Okay. What you want to do, I picked this problem on purpose so that we have to pick a test point. Okay. Just looking at that and going less than means below. No, it doesn't. Not in this case. So we pick a test point. I'm going to test zero, zero. Okay. That's going to be my test point. Again, every time you can, that's the easiest one to use. You can actually use any point you want. If you want to use five, negative 10, okay, wherever that is, you could use that. That's okay. Any point you want. The reason we're, I'm pushing the zero, zero point is because it makes my arithmetic easier and I'm lazy. All right, so we're going to test zero, zero. We test it always in the original problem. So we say, we say is two times zero minus five times zero, is it less than or equal to six? Question mark, that's what we're really doing. So that's zero, take away zero. So is zero less than or equal to six? Well, it's less than, so this is true. So my test point was true. My test point was above the line. That means truth is above the line. And we always shade towards truth, no matter who's the president. We always shade towards truth, and that would be the final answer for this problem. Okay, now, obviously, I encroached upon this other problem, so I'm going to have to erase that graph in a second. Questions about any work I did, anything I did or said on this particular problem? Okay, I don't hear anybody yelling. 
So I need to erase this graph. Um, I'll keep my work up here for a second. All right. Moving to this one. Okay. I see it's it has no y value. That means it's a trick. Okay. And so you can write something like damn you, Foster. Whatever. Yes, I will put these on tests and quizzes because I want to see can you pick up the the, the non-normal things? Okay, and do you know how to deal with them? So the first thing I'm going to do back here, 3x minus 2 equals 10. Pretend that it's an equal. Add 2 to both sides, so I get 3x equals 12. Divide by 3, I get x equals 4. All right, so how do I graph that? Again, several of you have indicated to me, can I just, if I know that it's um, a vertical line, can I just graph it? Yes, you can. Okay. But if you're not sure, I want to keep going over what you need to be thinking. Okay. This is saying X is locked in at four. And Y can be anything at all. In fact, why, why can be anything? Because they left it off of there. It's unimportant. Y could be zero. Y could be negative two. Y could be seven. It doesn't matter. So if we graph that, okay, we go four, zero. There's that. Four, negative two is right there. Four, seven is somewhere up there. I don't know. By the way, I should point out, if you guys don't like my sketches, okay, you feel uncomfortable on your homework, just kind of faking some of the sketches, um, it might be worthwhile to uh, get a pad of graph paper. Uh, don't pay a whole lot. Staples. I don't know if they have it in the bookstore. I don't know. But if you get a pad of graph paper, get something that's like a one quarter inch. That's good enough for everything. Okay. And that might be useful, but that's not a requirement. A reasonable sketch is all I'm ever going to ask you to make. Okay. If I wanted perfection, I would have had you guys buy a graphing calculator for 120 bucks. Okay, and besides which, in a little bit, I'll show you how to do it all online also. All right, so now we're back here. Those are my points. I need to draw a line. What kind of line do I draw through them? Dotted line. Dotted line, because up here it's not equal. So I come here dotted. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now I still have to shade. I still have to shade somehow. Okay. Um, easiest, again, is to pull a test point. Actually, there's an easier one for this one, but let's test zero, zero. Okay. So I plug it in. I plug in zero for X minus two is less than 10. There is no Y to plug in. Okay. So I get zero take away two. I get negative two is less than 10. Hey, that's true. So my test point was right there. It was true. That means everything to the left of the line is true. So I shade back here and we're done. And that's the end of it. Okay. Questions on either of those graphs? I have three more little baby problems, and then we get to chapter five. Three more review problems. Any questions on those? Uh, just to be sure, again, uh, 
So the y can be anything. On when it when it says x equals four, then the y x is locked at four. Y can be anything. If it had said, if we had done some other problem and it said y equals negative two, now you're going back to your table. Y is locked in at negative two, and x can be anything. Okay. Does does that is that okay with you or not? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Can I erase the whole thing? No one's going to scream at me? Okay. So last three problems. Um, okay. Uh, for number one and number two, I want you to state the domain and range. Okay, so here's problem number one. Um, what is it? Three, nine, seven, one, two, negative five. Okay. Problem number two is going to be this problem. So problem number two, I'm concerned with the triangle. I want the domain and range of the shape that the triangle is outlining. And problem number three, this is the last one, I'm gonna give you a function f of x is x squared minus x over three x uh, plus one. And I want you to find f of negative two. Okay, we'll pause. Okie dokie, um, all right. Domain and range, domain stands for all possible x values. So in this problem, the domain is three, seven, and whoops, two. Okay, those are the x values, because remember when you have an ordered pair, okay, the first number is always the x, okay? The range is all possible y values. So nine, one, negative five. So for problem number one, that would be your answer. The domain is all possible x's, the range is all possible y's. Okay. Now it gets trickier on number two. And the reason is problem number one, these are called discrete points. Discrete, there's there's a point, and they're not connected to each other. There's an individual points three individual points that are not connected to each other. But in problem number two, there are three points that are connected to each other, which means, for example, we have to somehow take into account all of these points, all of these points, and all of these points, remember when, when we draw a line, that's us being lazy. A line is made up of an infinite number of points. And we just can't put an infinite number of dots. So we just draw a line and we pretend 
that it means all those points. So again, let's look back at the difference. In the first problem, these were individual points called discrete. Discrete means individual. You can see them, okay? Individual points. And it was easy to pick out the domain and range. But problem number two, there's an infinite number of points, okay? And we still have to answer the question, what's the domain? So the domain is all possible X values. One of the things I personally like to do, because I like to make funny noises, is I like to ask myself, okay, if I squish this graph, okay, see, there's my funny noises. If I squish this graph onto the X axis, X axis means domain. So if I squish down and squish up everything from here to here would be covered up, would be squished into that. These would squish down, these would squish up. And so because of that, the domain is negative three to five with brackets. Everything on the x-axis from negative three up to five would be used in, in drawing this uh, shape for x's. Now, we use a similar argument. If I wanted to squish this onto the y-axis, okay, squish it onto the y-axis. So this goes over here, boom, this goes over here, boom. what got covered up? Everything from, from two down here to four. I don't, again, I'm not sure the blue shows up very well. Okay, it doesn't. But from uh, negative four, I'm sorry. So from negative four up to two, so the range is negative four to two. And you need to use this interval notation because it implies I, my domain starts at negative three and includes all the fractions and decimals and square roots and everybody up to five. That's what interval notation implies. Negative three is my start and everything up to five, all fractions, decimals. All right. Is that okay with everybody? Domain, range. Same concept, two different pictures. All right, moving on to number three. Okay, uh, f of x is a function. Okay, f of two just means plug a negative two into that function in place of the x's. So if we do that, we have negative two quantity squared minus negative two over three times negative two plus one. Look at all the negatives. And yes, when I give a quiz or a test on this, yes, it will have negatives there. So that's why I use the parentheses. They help me keep track of the negatives. Okay, and what to do with them. So for example, negative two squared is positive four. Negative two, the whole quantity squared means negative two times itself. Negative two times negative two is positive four. If you did it on your calculator, you probably did it wrong. Okay, the answer is positive four. Again, minus a minus becomes plus two. So negative two squared is four minus a negative is plus two. This is negative six plus one. Three times negative two. Clean it up. On top I have six. On the bottom I have negative five. And that's just the answer. F of negative two is equal to six fifths. Six over negative five. Okay. 
So that's it for chapter four review. I'm done with any kind of review on chapter four, unless you guys ask me questions um, in other classes, okay? Or send me emails or do something. But in my mind, I finished chapter four, unless you guys ask questions in other classes, okay? Tomorrow night, next week, whatever. All right. Can I erase and start chapter five? I have a quick question. Sure. Might be thinking of something else, but for the domain and the range, you don't have to go from lowest to highest number? Yeah. You do. You should. You Well, not here. Not when you're just listing the numbers. But when you're using interval notation, yes, you go lowest on the left, highest on the right. Okay, I got you. I thought it was for both. Well, you mean for number one versus number two? No. Yeah. Here, when you're just, if you have the opportunity to just list them, then you throw them in any old way you want. But if you have to use interval notation, then the correct format is low, comma, high. Low okay. on the left. Okay. Good question. Good clarifying question. Anybody else? Okay, then we're done with chapter four. We're gonna get into chapter five. Man, we're just blasting through this stuff. Okay. Um, I'm gonna spend some time babbling. Um, I'm not sure you need to take notes quite yet, um, but I'm not sure when to tell you to start or stop. So I, I, I don't know. That's kind of a stupid statement I just made. Chapter five is what's called systems of equations. And they're about two or more equations with two or more variables. Now, we have been studying one equation, okay? 2x plus 3y equals six. That, that was called a linear equation, one equation with two variables. Okay. Now we're going to look at something called a system of equations. And it would be two equations, maybe y equals one half x minus seven. And we'll tie them together with a single brace. Now, some books do and some books don't use a brace out here to indicate that those two are together. But pretty much you could tell by reading in context that these two are together. Okay, they're part of one big problem. The problem has two different equations, but it's one big giant problem. And ultimately what we're looking for is where do the lines cross? That is what we want. Where do the lines cross? Okay. And we know from graphing, from chapter four graphing, we know that a line goes on forever and ever. And we know they have positive and negative slopes. Okay. And we want to know where is this line going somewhere and this line going somewhere else. Where do they cross? What ordered pair? Ordered pair. Okay, because if you think about it, if we take one line going this way, and I'm just making this up, okay? Here's a line going this way. We'll call this line number one. And let's take another line going this way. We'll call this line number two. 
then they cross here. Okay, that's the answer. The answer is this ordered pair, which is always, I'm making this up, let's call that four comma one. So the solution for this problem would be four comma one. That's what we're looking for. Now, that is not the correct picture or correct graph for this. It's not the correct answer. It's not nothing, but it's an idea. This is an example of a system, two equations with two variables, okay? We wanna know where do the lines cross? So we're gonna graph them, okay? And we're gonna be, this time we have to be kind of careful in our graphs. We can't be as sloppy as we were because we wanna know where do those suckers cross? And they cross at an or ordered pair, a point, so that they, they need the parentheses. But remember we talked about it earlier in chapter two, the answer to all equations is the solution set. Okay, and I'll go over that, don't panic. But the key is, did you get this ordered pair? That's what I wanted to see. Did you get where they crossed? So that's just kind of a, a, a real brief overview, okay, of what we're gonna do. One of the things that mom is gonna ask at the beginning is she's gonna give you a system. And by the way, I should point out, I believe the chapter five homework is open. I think it's been open for a day or two. I just forgot to tell you guys. Several of you are still working on chapter four, which is fine, but now chapter five is also open. So anyway, mom is going to give you a system of equations that looks something like this, 2x minus y equals 5, and x plus y equals negative 17. And ask questions. Is 4 comma negative 1 a solution? Now, to be a solution, you've got to be able to plug it in to both equations and get true for both equations. If even one of them is a false, let's say, let's say I plug it in the top one, okay? Two times four, plug it in there, minus a minus one, does it equal five? That's eight plus one, no way it equals five. Okay, so by taking that, I plugged it in the top one, it failed. Is this a solution? No. Okay, it's that easy. Okay, what if we went to another one? Is okay. Is negative four comma negative thirteen a solution? Question mark. Okay, negative four, negative thirteen. Well, again, is it a solution? It's got to make both equations true. So let's plug it into the top one. Two times negative four minus a negative 13, does it equal five? That's negative eight plus 13. Okay, again, it comes back to arithmetic and PEMDAS. Does it equal five? Well, yes, but that's not good enough. It's yes for one of them, but it's gotta be yes for both of them because this is where they both cross. Remember, a line has an infinite number of places that make it true. And we want to find one of those, but we want to find the one place that makes both of them true at the same time. So we plug it into the bottom one. Okay, so that would be negative 4 for x plus negative 13 for y. Does it equal, question mark, negative 17. 
And you don't have to do any math. The answer is yes. So because each individually was yes, then the whole thing is a yes. Okay. So a solution has to make both equations true. It can't make one and not the other. It has to make both of them true. So some of the homework in section 5.1 is going to be just is here's a system is this a solution yes or no is this a solution yes or no okay just making you do a little bit of arithmetic a little bit of practice okay now moving on um in general in general we're going to have a system of two equations on tomorrow night. We're going to get to a system with three equations. That's why it's kind of important uh, that you're there tomorrow night because three equations gets really messy. But tonight we're going to have two equations. Okay. And we want to know where do they cross and you give the answer as an ordered pair. However, it gets kind of tricky here. And this is where you need to kind of pay attention. So for a system, there are three possible situations. And that means there are three possible types of answers. Okay, and you as the math student need to be aware of all three types. Okay, and be prepared to give me the appropriate answer for each type. The first type Okay, is if if your two lines, so if we take this line, call that line one, and we take this line and call that line two, okay, if they just cross at a normal point, just they cross, okay? Then the answer is this point right here, and you do it as a solution set of whatever that ordered pair is, uh, one comma three or whatever, where the cross is the answer. Okay, that's one situation. A different situation. What if you have a line going like this and you have a different line going like this? There's line two. In other words, in this situation, the two lines are parallel. They don't cross. But I want to know where they cross. So if they don't cross at all, then the answer is there is no solution. Or I prefer that symbol, whichever. There's no solution. Remember, and I erased it up here, and it's kind of important. Ultimately, we're looking for where do the lines cross? That's what we want. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, where do they cross? Where do they cross? That's the answer. If they cross at a single point, you go, yay. And then you give me the ordered pair, whatever it was. But if they don't cross, then there can't be an answer. 
Okay, so how do you indicate there is no answer to this problem? You either write the words no solution or the empty set like that. Okay, you guys with me so far? Okay, the third situation is kind of wacko. There's a third possibility, okay? And that is um, the two lines happen to be, so here's line number one. The two lines happen to be the same line. So this is line number two. They happen to be the same line. Okay. Now, this is kind of weird, so please hang with me for a minute. This means they're crossing an infinite number of times. There's an infinite number of solutions. Infinite crosses. Because essentially they're right on top of each other. Okay? So they're they're making infinite number of touches, crosses. So in math there is a weird way that we indicate this. And yes, mom uses this. Sometimes she uses the word infinite, but sometimes I got to I got to tell you a little bit about mom. Okay, uh, mom is this software program that this guy wrote, and he asked people to send in their favorite questions. He, he said, okay, this is the software I'm gonna use. This is the programming language I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna make this free to everybody, but I need people to write problems for me, to write homework problems, okay? To write quizzes and stuff like this. And so hundreds of teachers gave him they they said okay there's your programming language i'll follow your programming language and i'll give you all of these problems because they really like this idea of making a free homework uh program and possible quizzing program and therefore hundreds of teachers gave information but that means one question might be worded slightly differently because a hundred different teachers have a slightly different way of saying it. So some teachers might want you to write no solution. Others might want you to write the empty set, the set that is empty. That's like, um, what was it for, for undefined slope? Okay, you're supposed to say undefined, but some teachers use the words DNE, does not exist. And that's because everything we're seeing in mom has been written by different instructors. They all have the same basic idea, but they're just a little bit different. So some instructors might allow you to say write infinite. You have to read the directions. Okay, but the proper way. The proper way as you move up in math is going to be this. You put the solution set of a, and you put x comma y bar, and then you pick one of the equations, 3x plus 2y equals 5. Okay. So solution set, ordered pair, bar. And then remember you had two equations, you just put either one of them here. And what that says is any ordered pair that makes this equation true 
makes the other one true because they're the same. And I'll give you more detail, but it's only in this case where they're the same line. Do you worry about that? Okay, so 90% 90, 90 of your problems, actually probably closer to 96% of your problems will be like this. You get an answer. The two lines cross, you find out where they cross, usually you're done. A few of the problems are gonna be parallel. They don't cross. So you say there's no solution or there's empty set or something. A few more are gonna be tricks that are the, actually the same line, okay? They're on top of each other. When you, if you graph them, they'd be on top of each other. So they're the same line in which case they have an infinite number of crossings. Sometimes some of the questions will say write infinite. Others will say use this format. Okay, and again, the format is parentheses, ordered pair, X column Y bar, and then you just throw in one of the equations, whichever one your problem had. Okay, what time is it? 7.40. Let's take about a three-minute break. Okay, I'll pause. We'll take about a three-minute break. Come back and do P. Um, can you guys hear me? Because my headphone did something weird. Yes. Okay, good. All right. So on exam number one, I'm going to say solve by graphing, okay? And you may think you know a better way, but I want you to use graphing to solve this. Okay, so when the directions say solve by graphing, I actually want to see that you can graph this by whichever method, however you use. Do you use a table of values? Do you use slope intercept? What do you use? So let's take about two minutes for you to try and graph this. Now, this is kind of an ugly one to graph, which is okay with me. Okay. So take a couple minutes. So Okay, I'm gonna call this equation A and this equation B. So on equation A, I'm gonna build a table, X, Y. And if X is zero, that drops out. I can divide both sides by negative three and I get Y is 11 over three, which is three and two thirds, okay? And then I want to say, well, what if y is zero? This is still on equation A. What if y is zero? Then this part drops out. And I get 2x equals negative 11. x equals negative 11 over 2, which is also negative 5 and a half. You have your calculator. You can do that. So we can graph this. And now we have to be reasonably careful. When x is zero, y is three and two thirds, almost four. One, two, three, four. When x is zero, y is oh, right about there, three and two thirds. When x is negative five and a half, y is zero. Negative five and a half. Well, here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So negative five and a half is right about there. Okay, comma zero. So this is the line. Now, it is common that you put the equation of the line next to the line that you just graphed. We didn't do it in chapter four because there's only one line there. 
Okay, but now we have two, and tomorrow night we'll worry about three lines. Oh my God. Okay. So to keep track so that the reader, that's me, the instructor who's trying to grade your paper. So I know that you think this line, this is the equation for this line. That's fine. Now we go to the other line, line B. And again, I personally am going to use an XY table in line B. If X is zero, then that drops out, divide by negative four, we have Y is positive three fourths. If Y is zero, if Y is zero, that drops out and we get X is negative three. Okay, so we graph this. When X is zero, Y is three fourths. Yeah, kind of like there. When X is negative three, Y is zero. Kind of like there. Okay, so when I connect these dots, yo. Okay, put the equation here, X minus four Y equals negative three. Okay. In my picture, in my picture, where is the answer? How do I find the answer? Nobody knows? Is that where it crosses? Where it crosses, yeah. So let's assume, okay, what does my picture imply the answer might be if I graph this somewhat accurately? Negative seven, negative four. Okay, negative seven, negative one. That's a good answer. I think it's negative seven, negative one. Okay, how do I know I'm right? Put X and a Y back to the equation back into both equations, okay? Because it might make this one true and fail in this one. I don't know. Uh, what, are, what do you guys think it is? Does it check or not? Yes, it's checked. Does it here real quick? I think it is. I think negative seven, negative 14 plus three is negative 11. And negative seven plus four is negative three. Yes, it checks in both. Okay, checks both. So my actual answer is this. Okay. Excuse me, Professor, where did you get the minus seven, negative seven, negative one? Somebody told me. We guessed at this drawing. Remember, this was. Uh, this was negative, uh, what was it, five and a half? So negative five and a half, that's negative six. Looks like negative seven is right about there. Okay, and it looks like it went down one. So we guessed at negative seven, negative one. Just a guess. Okay, that you should be really upset with that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Question to everybody. Name something that's bad about the graphing method. It has to be exact. Okay. It too better much work. be. Oh, too much work. Okay. And okay. If you're the slightest bit off, you're going to get it screwed up. Okay. And what if your answer was actually a decimal? How would you know? Okay, and it's slow. It's really, really slow. Okay, so the graphing method is really good for visual representation. It's good to see this is what the, this is what the problem looks like. But it's terrible when you're trying to actually do a problem and get an answer and do it fast. OK, 
Okay, and what if the answer is a fraction or a decimal? Graphing is horrible for that. However, on the exam number one, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, I will have a problem that says solve by graphing. So I would want to see this kind of work. I promise you that I will make sure that it does not have fractional or decimal answers. When I do one and I say solve by graphing, it will not have fractions. Okay, it'll just have whole numbers there for you. So it'll be easy for you to check. Okay, so the reason I did this was number one, I wanted to review, okay, this is how you graph and you find where they cross. But number two is I wanted to point out how terrible the graphing method is. It's slow, it's hard, it's not accurate at all. Thus the question, uh, where did I get negative seven, negative one? Well, I don't know, I guessed. Okay, so there are better ways. And that's what we're gonna discuss the remainder of the night. The better, more algebra ways to solve this problem. The better ways, okay? Graphing, we're all agreed, I am gonna test it, but we're all agreed, it's re it really sucks, it's bad. But I wanna know, do you know how to do it? Okay, so let's try a new method. And the new method, the first method I'm gonna show you is called substitution. Okay. Substitution, you, okay, first you pick one equation and you isolate a variable. And I can't stress enough to be lazy. Okay, isolate a variable, which I can't spell properly, B-L-E, good English, idiot. Okay, okay. Isolate a variable means get a variable by itself. Okay, get a variable by itself. So I'm giving you all kinds of leeway here. In this problem, pick an equation, any, 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 mo but get a variable by itself. Which equation would it be easiest to get a variable by itself? What do you guys think? X minus 4y. Uh, yeah. It looks like B, equation B, X minus 4y, it's easy to get X by itself by adding 4y to both sides. That's the lazy way to do this. That's the thinking way. Pick, a, pick an equation, isolate a variable, okay? Plug into other, really important, other equation and solve. Third, they call it back substitution for other answer. I'll show you what this means in a minute. And fourth, somehow put your answer in solution set. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through it and then we'll do a couple. And then we'll talk about another method. Okay. So we're using what's called the substitution method. We pick one equation, isolate a variable. So a couple of people said, let's take equation B, which is X minus four Y equals negative three. And let's get X alone. So we get to add four Y to both sides. 
So we have x equals 4y minus 3. Now, we plug this into the other equation. Okay, and this, you guys kind of have to watch me point at the board here. Okay, this says x is the same as, remember an equal sign means is the same as. X is the same as this. So I am gonna put this mess in the other equation in place of X. I'm gonna substitute, hence the name, substitution. I'm gonna substitute this mess into the other equation in place of X, because this says they're the same. So I'm going to write 2 times this mess, 4y minus 3, minus 3y equals negative 11. So this is equation A, okay? And this mess right here used to be the x. Okay, now all of a sudden, what we have is what we were doing back in chapter two. We're solving an equation. Okay, we have to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. So we have 8y minus 6, because we distribute, minus 3y equals negative 11. Okay, combine like terms, I'll come up here. So I have 5y minus 6 equals negative 11. Add 6 to both sides, so 5y equals negative 5. Divide both sides by 5, y is negative 1. Okay, so I picked one equation, but I got lazy. I picked the one that was easiest to get a variable by itself, to isolate a variable. I plugged it into the other equation. So I replaced x with this mess, 4y minus 3 and solved the new equation. Now, this back substitute, okay, is, is a more modern term. What it means is we figured out what y is. We still have to figure out what x is. So you substitute this back into any equation you want, whichever equation seems simplest, to figure out what x is, okay? So personally, I use this one. If I already have x alone, look at this one. We already did this, x equals 4y minus three. So I'm gonna put y is negative one, so x is four, times negative one minus three. So X is negative seven. That's called the back substitution. Substitute this answer back into one of the problems, one of the equations to figure out the Y. And then solution set, ordered pair, negative seven comma negative one telling the world that these two lines crossed at that point. You didn't have to graph them, you just now know they crossed at that point. Yes or no? We'll do more, so hang on. But how are you guys doing on kind of the steps, kind of the algebra? That's called the substitution method. Okay, you guys want to do another one? Where did you get negative seven? Okay. Are you happy with where I got 
y is negative one? Yeah. Okay, you're there. Okay, good. Then I take this, y is negative one, and I plug it back into one of these equations. Pick, pick okay, one. Got, got it. Yeah, yeah. And I just happened to pick that one. If you had picked any of the other ones, and assuming you didn't make an arithmetic mistake, we would have all gotten the same answer. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Okay, so I can erase and put up another problem. We're going to use substitution on. Can I, I, I need to erase these steps. Have you guys got them written down somewhere in your notes? Anybody still writing them? All right, I don't hear any yelling. I'm going to hear yelling as soon as I erase. Okay, try this one. Hmm. Again, this time I want you to use the substitution method. Okay, and here's our system. First equation is y equals x minus two. Second equation is negative six x plus three y equals negative nine. Okay, so let's pause and have you guys go at it. Okay, so the steps were pick an equation and isolate a variable and be lazy about it. Well, in my opinion, A is already picked for me because Y is already alone. I don't have to do any work at all, okay? There's my substitution. But I'm gonna put it, the key is always into the other equation. So we're gonna go into equation B and we're gonna substitute in place of Y we're going to put x minus 2. So in the other equations, we're going to have negative 6x plus 3 times y. But in place of y, we put the quantity x minus 2 equals negative 9. Okay, and now we solve. Negative 6x plus 3x minus 6 equals negative 9 because we distribute. Combine like terms, negative six and three is negative three X minus six equals negative nine. Add six to both sides. So negative three equals negative three, ne excuse me, negative three X equals negative three. Divide by negative three, X is one. Now, again, I, now I'm going to use the back substitution. I'm going to take x is 1, and I'm going to plug it here, or here, or here. Well, those two are the same, OK, because we didn't change anybody. OK, so again, I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to start with if y equals x minus 2, then y equals 1 minus 2. So y is negative one. So my solution, where's my glare? Okay, solution set of one comma negative one. Again, the implication is you're saying, if I graph these, and thank God I don't have to, but if I graph these, these two lines would cross at that point. 
If I bothered to graph these, that would be their crossing point. Questions? Okay. Then I want to move on to the last topic of the night. And we may get out here 8.30, 8.35, which is cool. Okay. Be sure there's no questions on substitution. Okay. Probably those of you who've had this in the past and just forgot it, this is bringing back some maybe fond memories isn't the right word, but it's bringing back some memories. Okay. Need to erase? Anybody yell at me? All right. Then the other technique, okay. Uh, I should go back for your notes. Take a second. In chapter 5.1, we solve by graphing. So in your notes, you might want to go back and label that. Chapter 5.2, I was not very good about this. What it's solve by substitution. So go back and you might want to put those headings in your notes. You can tell where we started by when we started 5.1, that was all the graphing and all that crap. As soon as we moved into substitution, that was section 5.2. And now we're going to do 5.3. It's solve by what's called elimination. Okay. Ah. Uh, Okay, so one of the keys, and this may seem really simple to you, but one of the keys, if I have three X in a problem and I take away three X, what do I have in the problem? What's left? X, Y. No, if I if I have three x, let's say I, okay, yeah. let's say I have three x plus nine, and I take away three x from this. What happened to the three x's? It's gone. They, it's they're gone, and I just get nine. These are called opposites of each other, and opposites eliminate each other. They cancel each other out. We're going to take advantage of that concept. I'll show you with an example. Okay, but you're going to ask me, huh, wait, what are you doing? I'm taking advantage that a negative and a positive, assuming they're exactly the same, but one's a negative, one's a positive. When I add them together, they cancel each other out. They eliminate each other. Okay, so here's our steps. First, we're going to multiply one or both equations by, you're not going to like this one, a magic number. So that number two, when you add equations together, a variable 
is eliminated. Just write it down. I'll explain to you, especially what the heck a magic number is. I'll get there. Third, you're going to solve. You're going to back substitute. And you're going to put it in a solution set. All right, this is like, in some ways, this is like playing chess. If you're a good chess player, you have to be thinking about the future steps, not just move because it's pretty, or I like the horses because they jump over everybody. You have to be thinking about what are the ramifications of this. All right, question. If you added these two equations together, just right now, just add them together, would any variable drop out of the problem? Would any variable be eliminated? No. Nope. No, because if you added these together, you'd have 5x plus 5y equals 10, and you still have x and y. That doesn't do me any good. So you're supposed to sit here and think, and stare at this problem and say, hmm, what number can I pull out of thin air and multiply either the top one or the bottom one or both so that somebody would drop out? Let me show you what I'm talking about. The magic number in this case is negative four. I'm going to multiply by negative four to the top equation. And in this instance, I'm going to leave the bottom equation alone. Okay, why? Why did I do that? Because I know if I had a negative four times y, I'd have a negative four y. And if I add it with a positive four y, my y's will be eliminated. That's the whole game. I pulled this negative four out of thin air because I knew that if I could turn this into a negative four Y and add it with positive four Y, the Ys would dump out, would cancel out. Okay, so there's my magic number. And this time, by the way, I only had to work on one of the equations, not both of them. So let's see what happens. So if I multiply this by negative four, I get negative eight X minus four Y equals negative 24. That was the top equation. Negative four times two is negative eight X. Negative four times Y is negative four Y. Negative four times six is negative 24. On the bottom equation, I'm gonna leave alone. Now I want to add these together. If life is good, when I add them together, I should have eliminated a variable. And I did. My y's canceled each other out because one's a positive and one's a negative. Does that one should be negative 5x? It's 5x. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that what I heard all kinds of people telling me? Thank you. Is that better? There's another question that was not that, but is that okay? Thank you. Okay. It is hard to talk and write and think at the same time. Okay. So 
Now I'm, I've done that. So now I can go ahead and solve. I divide by negative five. So that gives me X equals four. Negative 20 divided by negative five is four. Okay, now we do the back substitute again. I got X, I gotta put it in here, okay? One of those two, take your pick, it doesn't matter. Whichever one seems easier. I don't know, bottom one, I guess, I don't know. So I'll, I'll put it in the bottom one. So that's gonna be three times four, I'm sticking it in the bottom one, plus four Y equals four. So I stuck X into the bottom equation. That's the back substitution. I'm substituting X back inside, okay? So this is 12 plus four Y equals four. Take away 12 from both sides. That gives me four Y equals negative eight. Divide by four, Y is negative two. So again, if I had graphed these, and we're all thinking the math gods that we don't have to graph them, okay? If I had graphed these, these two would cross at the point four comma negative two. That's how you put them together into one big fat answer. Okay, so let's go through this. Multiply one or both of the equations by some magic number, okay? But you just don't pick it randomly. You have to think a step ahead so that when you add the equations together, one of the variables drops out. When you add the equations together, a variable is eliminated. I looked here and saw, hmm, if I could make that a negative four Y, it would cross out with that positive four. So that's the magic number I multiplied by. Questions. And there could be a lot of questions because there's more than one way to do every single one of these problems. I just showed you the easiest way for this problem. Okay, um, let's try this problem. You guys try this next problem. Uh, I'll leave the steps up here, I guess. I want to erase the problem. Um, anybody still writing it down? Can I erase it? Okay, here we go. Okay, I want you to solve by elimination this problem. 2x plus 3y equals 17 and 5x plus 7y equals 29. Hint. You're going to have to multiply both equations, the top equation by one number, the bottom equation by a different number. Okay, remember I said multiply one or both of the equations. Okay, so you're going to multiply the top equation by some number. I'll leave it to you to think about it. And the bottom equation by a different number. And there's at least four different ways this problem can be done and they're all correct. So I'll pause and let you guys think about this for a second. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start the problem and explain my reasoning. And maybe that'll clear up some of the questions. I'm gonna multiply 
this top equation by five. Okay, that's going to make this 10x, 6y, and who the heck knows what that is, 85 or something like that. I don't know. I'll figure that one out later. But I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 2. So look what I've just done. That, that's going to become a positive 10x. That's where I'm pointing. That's going to become a positive 10x. That's going to become a negative 10x. And when I add these together, the positive 10x and the negative 10x will cancel each other out. And that's what I wanted. When you add the equations together, a variable is eliminated. OK, where did I get the 5 and the negative 2? That's why I call them magic. That's where you have to do some thinking. OK. You got to ask yourself, what could I multiply by? Now, just to forestall a few questions here, you could have multiplied the top equation by seven and the bottom equation by negative three. And that would have eliminated the y values. And that would have been just as good. Okay, we would eventually get the same answer. Okay. Different steps. That's why it's going to be really important on the test or quiz or whatever that you show me your steps, your work. So here I go. Top equation by five. That gives me 10x plus 15y equals, I think that's 85. I'm pretty sure it is. Bottom number by negative two. That gives me negative 10x. Minus 14y, ooh, that's nice, equals negative 58. 2 times 29 was 58 negative. Again, use your calculator. Don't be a hero. One tiny little dumb mistake here, multiplying, adding, screws up everything. So don't be a hero. Maybe do your work, but maybe double check it on the calculator. All right, add these together. The 10x is canceled out just like I wanted. So I end up with 1y equals, okay, what's 85 take away 58? Okay, 7, 7, 27? 27. 27, good. Okay, so that gives me y is 27. Okay, now I have to go back substitute. That means I got to take the 27 for y and either put it in that equation or that equation. I could also, by the way, put it in these two. Wouldn't matter, but these are really big, ugly equations and I want to avoid them. I like smaller numbers. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll put it in the top one. Y is 27, so I have 2x, I'm going to the top one, plus 3 times 27 equals 17. Okay, 2x plus, I believe that's 81, 3 times 27, yeah, 81 equals 17. Take away 81 from both sides. Um, kind of halfway 64. in the So 2x equals negative 64. Divide x is negative 32. Okay, put these all together. Solution set, ordered pair, negative 32, comma 27, boom. Now, couple things. When you get to do these on mom, sometimes you have to read the directions. Sometimes they'll ask for the answer as an ordered pair, which is the proper way. But sometimes they'll just say, okay, y equals, and you put the 27, and then the next line down, x equals, and you put the negative 32. 
Sometimes they want the X and Y listed separately because it's a software computer program. Okay. Sometimes they want it as an ordered pair. So you have to read the directions. Okay. The proper way as is this ordered pair. But again, like I said, different instructors have written all those questions. So they're kind of weird. All right. How are we doing? That's called the addition or the elimination method. Addition elimination is actually its full name. Questions on that one? Okay, what time is it? Uh, yeah, I'll do the rest of it tomorrow night. Okay, see you guys all tomorrow night at Mesa. I'll be there at six o'clock for office hours. Have the room open. You can come in again. You can sit around, do nothing. We do have to practice some form of social distancing, okay? So nobody can dance with anybody else and you can't actually sit next to each other, sorry. Um, you can drink in the room, but if you're gonna eat, um, go outside. That's all I ask and I don't have any problems with people going outside. Just get up and go, it's okay with me. See you tomorrow, guys. See you tomorrow on campus. Wear a mask, please. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I have a question. Yes. Uh, it's, um, just, it is possible that we can have access to your tapes um, after you give the lecture. Uh, oh. English, is, English is my second language, and usually it takes me time to um, understand some of your um, explanations and unfortunately <laughs> yeah. unfortunately i cannot um i work in a hospital